LeBron James, Tiger Woods, even Hillary Clinton. There's a lot to talk about. Star Jones is here. She is the president of the Professional Diversity Network. Thank you so much for joining us. Daytime Divas, we're going to talk about that. You're the executive producer of this new show on VH1. I can't. I already have the DVR. It wasn't on the DVR yet. And so I'm waiting so that I can set it. So yes. I'm ready for it. I'm Definitely. ready. So let's talk. Let's get to our hot topics. And you should know that from oh, the yes, view, right? Oh, yes, sir. I can do it. So let's talk Hillary Clinton. Um, she's saying she, she talked about her loss. She blamed several aspects, she said, on the uh, DNC's uh, communications, their um, their internet. She uh, also took responsibility for whatever and James role Comey. she played. And, and I mean, I, I think that Secretary Clinton has every right to sort of look back and dissect or do an autopsy on um, uh, the campaign. I saw her just recently, just uh, about a week ago, and she's ready to move forward. But I think she's going to step right back in mm -hmm. to the political discourse. Why do people want to silence her? They've always wanted to silence Hillary. This is not something new. Um, uh, Secretary Clinton is still one of the most brilliant voices and a voice of change, and I think it's important for us to listen to her. I, I'm not, I don't believe in silencing people. I don't believe in boycotting do people. It's a, this is, that's what uh, America is about, about freedom of speech. But the thing is, is that they, people are wondering whether it's politically, you know, um, good for the Democrats that she is speaking out. If that's um, right now, I think that it is politically good for yeah. the Democrats to have anybody with a real voice speak out. Let's talk about LeBron James. Racial slur on the gate of his house in, in L.A. written on that. What do you I think racism has reared its ugly head and, and, and come out and said hello to people. They, um, what people once only thought and was afraid to say, I think with this president, um, making it okay to come out from underneath your hood, um, that's what we're going to get. You think the president made it okay? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, excuse me, I didn't stutter when I said that. I think when the, when the president of the United States sort of appeals to a white nationalist agenda and embraces people who were fearful of the browning of America and for all practical purposes clung with their dying fingers to white male uh, privilege, nah, he made it okay. There was a press conference today in today's White House briefing. Sean Spicer uh, was asked by reporter April Ryan about uh, LeBron James as well as some other racial incidents. Let's listen and then we'll talk about it. There are uh Numbers of uh, reports on hate crimes. Uses have been found at the museum, the new museum that the president toured, the African American History and Culture Museum. And also, there was some um, very negative work, one of the worst words you can say, spray painting on LeBron James' home. Um, what is the president saying about this? It's specifically, as people are saying, over the last uh, 130 plus days, people are feeling that there has been a divide that is perpetuated from this White House. Well, I, I would respectfully disagree with the premise of that. I think um, we need to denounce hate in any form, uh, in any act. Uh, and this president made it clear from election night to his inauguration that he wants to unite this country and move it forward. From election night to the inauguration, uh, do you think the president is handling these issues, addressing these issues? I don't think it even crosses his mind. That's one of the things that I did discuss with Secretary Clinton, that some of these issues that were on her front burner have not even just put, put on the black back burner. They've been taken off the stove. I don't think addressing racism is a big issue to him in the least tiny bit. I don't think it even crosses his mind. Sean Spicer looked at, at a April as if to say, Lord, why are you asking me about these black people? I really <laughs> don't want to talk about it because it's not something that we discuss with the president on a regular basis. But, uh, do you think it's a matter of you don't know what you don't know and if you don't know maybe you just don't care about it's it? It's not his experience. Yeah. I don't think it's his experience and what is what is probably more bothersome for the President of the United States is he's not intellectually curious enough to find out what other people who are not like him what their experience is and that is what I think LeBron was trying to say no matter how much money you have how much influence where you come from where you are mm -hmm. You're still black. Let's talk more about LeBron. Do you mention that Jason Whitlock, Fox Sports One, had another take on LeBron James incident? Here's what he had to say about it. He allegedly had the N word spray painted on his twenty million dollar Brentwood home. Home. He wasn't there. His family wasn't there. He heard about it. Racism is an issue in America, but it is primarily an issue for the poor. It's not LeBron James's issue. LeBron James, whether he likes it or not, or whether people close to him are telling him or not, he has removed himself from the damages and the ravages 
of real racism. He may have an occasional disrespectful interaction with someone, a disrespectful uh, inconvenience. Hate much? Give me a break. His $20 million home? You don't get to tell somebody else what their racism experience is. Money does not inoculate you from racism. Money nor position. Yeah. Ask the President of the United States, the 44th President of the United States, what it felt like to have people around our country uh, speak about him in such racist terms over the course of eight years. It does not matter. You can be the leader of the free world and still be subject There's to racism. There's a difference racism. too when you're the, the, the first lady of the United States and you're Michelle Obama, people will call you a monkey or an ape. But when mm -hmm. you're Melania Trump, I've never heard anyone call Melania Trump a monkey. Oh, absolutely not. It would be in, it would, and it would be inappropriate are, to speak that way right. about the first lady but it wasn't inappropriate to speak about our elegant, most beautiful First Lady Michelle Obama. There's a difference between, and I think Jason is not getting it, between classism, uh, social structure in society, and racism. There is a difference there. Maybe he has money, maybe he has some privilege in the sense that he has money, but it definitely does not inoculate you from racism. 100%. If somebody ever tells you there's two buses, the black folk over there and the white folk over there, no matter how much money you are, they will put you on the other bus. Let's talk about daytime divas. So, uh, yes, let's lighten the mood. VH1, the fa she's so gorgeous, Vanessa Williams. I so know. She plays Maxine, who is one of the, the hosts of the long-running women's talk show. Uh, so tell me about daytime divas. Is it The View? No, it is not The View. You ask the same questions that everybody in America is asking right Who now. Who is Barbara Walters? <sighs> Who is Star Jones? Who's Lisa Ling? Oh, it wasn't Lisa in the first season. It was um, Debbie Matt was Matt in the first season. But remember now, I've had 25 years of experience in daytime and in news television. I've been in every green room and makeup room in, in the, the New York area, so I've, I've heard and seen a lot. Yeah. I've got to pull from all of these experiences, so it's inspired by uh, lots of different uh, people. I can tell you there's a completely fictional account yeah. of the behind-the-scenes work of a daytime talk show, yeah. and Maxine Robinson, an homage to Max Robinson, yeah. our colleague. Oh. I know. Doesn't it just make you well, fail to be yeah, able wrote, to say I, that? I write in my book how he inspired me. I love Max Robinson. Remember X, Max Robinson in Chicago? Yes. Uh, Peter Jennings, I think, was in London, New York, yes. and then it was uh, Frank Reynolds in yes. New York, or it was the, vice versa. I used to love watching them. I'm showing my age now. But I do have to say, um, you sat your butt on The View today, and I was like, there, there it is. That's The View. It felt like old times. And when you and Meredith did it, remember you guys did the oh, joke? Absolutely. Was it April Fool's? I forget yeah, what it was. We, we were doing like a throwback Thursday, which was wonderful. And I have to tell you, Never. all The View women have been very supportive of yeah. daytime divas. But um, it's tag your it, Vanessa. You're going to take the reins and run with Never it. Never been better, The View. I can't wait for daytime divas. Monday, June 5th, it premieres on VH1. Make sure you watch. Star, always a pleasure. Have a great Nice day. to see you again.